I think it's fair to say that Manchester United's game against Copenhagen on Tuesday in the Champions League is a must win. You know, sometimes you can over-exaggerate. Yeah, we all get caught up in it. This really is. Man United, we've played two games so far in the Champions League. We've lost both. We're bottom of the league. Bayern are playing Galatasaray twice. And then we go away to Galatasaray. Yeah. Good luck back in the night. Well, after we play Copenhagen. But good luck back in the night in that atmosphere. I'm going to run through my starting eleven. Tactical changes I think there'll be to the team. And I think there will be a few for this must-win game. Because Ten Hag, look, he's not going to hide it. He knows full well that United have to win. All right? That game against Galatasaray was brutal in the Champions League. It had it's probably some of the, the best moments of the season. Certainly Hoyland's second goal, but it led to nothing. Manchester United conceding after scoring twice, quickly. And against Sheffield United, that is the worst habit that we've got this season. Copenhagen, right? They were 2 0 up away at Galatasaray. I got a man sent off and then they drew 2 all. They were 1 0 up against Bayern Munich and then they lost 2 1 at home. They're currently on one point. United are sitting there pretty on zero. Let's run through how Copenhagen lined up in their last Champions League game. It was a more of a traditional 4 3 3 shape. So I suppose we can expect them to do the same thing against us. But this United team. I'll be honest, uh, we have not progressed in any way, shape or form a playing style this season. We got into it with the aggressive two number eights, one holding number six midfielder, and it didn't work, right? Casemiro was isolated, and then Ten Hag has tried other things, and we're kind of in, I, I call it like crisis management mode. The football against Sheffield United and, and Brentford was bad. Football away at Burnley, bad. But three wins. And three wins that this team needs. But going into the game against City, this team has got to get some momentum. My word, because we hardly had any of it. We might have got three points against Sheffield United, but the momentum wasn't there in the football. Now, this was the team that played. If I'm going to highlight what I think were the key problems, I would say the positions of McTominay and Bruno. If you saw Amrabat, Amrabat was dropping deep here, but uh, Sheffield United had like one, two, three men. Let's bring them on here. Doesn't really matter what color they are. They had like a, tr they, they were marking in this sort of area, right? They were pressing United like that. Whenever we were on the ball, Amrabat was the other side of them. And Maguire and Evans, they couldn't get the ball out to Amrabat. All right. And by doing that, by blocking the passing lanes through the middle, it forced United wide. And it just, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. So I think there will be changes to this team. And the one change I really am kind of desperate to see at this point, really, is Sergio Regulon. Now, Eric Ten Hag has said this about Sergio in his pre-match press conference. Got to zoom in on that one. He said, look, Sergio trained all week. He will, today he will train, then we will have to assess if he can be game fit. And we need him to be fit. Lindelof against Sheffield United, man. He tried. Uh, he tried. He went into the inverted fullback role, but he just didn't know what he was doing. Because he's a centre-back. Remember last season, people were calling for him to play in central defensive midfield. We need that change, please. Please be fit, Regulon. Shaw isn't going to be back until likely after the international break. So, what's that, 27th of November? I don't know. Probably longer than that. I don't even know when the international break finishes. We need a natural left back. And especially going into the game against City, where they're going to have Kyle Walker down the right, Phil Foden down the right, Jack Grealish down the right. We need Regulon back in this team. We need some shape in that defence. And also in terms of the actual centre-backs. Evans and Maguire, they played uh, against Sheffield United I think we will see this man start. I think we'll see Rafa Varane come in. Maybe one, for the experience, but two, if Eric Ten Hagen, I know he will, he'll want him fit for the City game. I think you start Varane against Copenhagen and you take him off after 60-65. If all goes to plan, which it probably won't in the game because this is just how United are playing at this moment in time. I think you will probably see Lindelof start at left, left centre-back. That's That would be my prediction for the back five. And again, isn't it mad? Every single game, you're chopping and you're changing the defence. It makes it really hard to be consistent in how you play, how you play out from the back. Your whole defensive unit is not a unit when you take one or two players in and out of it every single game. But that's what United are having to do at this moment in time. Martinez won't be here until, what, the new year? I don't know when Martinez is going to be back. No idea. Rafa Varane, he's been in and out with injuries. Onana, don't you dare drop another Champions League clanger. Please, I'm all again. I'm almost begging at this point. Just, just don't. It's all on him now. It's all on him. If he continues 
to keep making these mistakes. And there's only so far a manager support can go. And I know will know that himself. So don't do it again, please. But the crucial part for United in this game, I think, for sure, will be in the midfield. What are you choosing as Man United's most balanced midfield at this moment in time? If you've not got Hannibal on there, I think Hannibal is part of the conversation and part of these options. You've not got Scott McTominay on there and he started in midfield, so you can throw him into the mix as well. Casemiro's obviously injured, and even if he wasn't injured, he's banned from this game because he got sent off against Galatasaray. So Casemiro's not playing. And this was the midfield that started against Sheffield United. I don't want to see that. I want to see this change. And I'll be honest, I kind of I was surprised it didn't happen from the start against Sheffield United. The fact that he scored, I suppose, is a testament to the fact that Scott McTominay was the right choice. But in terms of an actual team, in terms of actual showing yourself for the ball, in terms of having some element of control, which we keep talking about, you're not going to get that with McTominay in midfield. McTominay is a player who should be coming on the last 20, 30 minutes of a game if you need a different uh, a different approach. And he can be that crashing midfielder that comes into the, the box with the late runs and he will score goals. And he's an impactful player. I just don't think he offers enough in midfield to control the game. And I'll be honest, Bruno needs to... In that game against Sheffield United, when Amrabat was dropping in between the two centre-backs, you had our two full-backs really pushing up. You had Lindelof and Varane splitting. Uh, well, well, you didn't have Lindelof. You had our two centre backs, Maguire and Evans splitting and Amrabat. And then Bruno was kind of operating as this player here. That didn't work. All right. That's where someone like Christian Eriksen is better in that position because he's better as a deeper orchestrator compared to Bruno. Bruno is the man you want delivering the pass into Hoyland, around the corner to Rashford, that final through ball. That's where Bruno's at his best. Don't get him playing deeper. But I do think it will be Bruno. I think it will be Mount. And I think it will be Amrabat in midfield to start this game. I think if you're looking at to change a game later on, you're probably looking towards Christian Eriksen coming on. Maybe Kami Mainu could get some minutes. I think Hannibal has to be a conversation point as well. Really has, well, probably one of, is it Galatasaray and Burnley? Was that when he played two games in a row? I think it was. But I would go for that. I would go, you could potentially put Mason Mount out on that right-hand side, which is a position he doesn't, he does play well and can play well. But I think he'll play that front, that midfield three, and then maybe bring Hannibal on and Eriksen on to sh to change up and bring some energy as the game develops. Now, in attack, I do think there needs to be some changes too. And I'll run through the main one here. Okay. Marcus Rashford. I think Marcus Rashford definitely starts the derby on Sunday. But I think Alejandro Garnacho comes in and starts this game. And it's not Eric Ten Hag saying, oh, Garnacho, you're not good enough to be starting against City. It's like, this is a must-win game, man. This is a Champions League knockout tie now. And I think he chooses Garnacho. That gives Rashford a little bit of a rest. Maybe he's, maybe he's fatigued. I don't know what it is with him. It, it, there seems to be something going wrong, wrong upstairs. Like, he's just not... Whether it's the... Something's happening in, in his personal life that's affecting his focus. I don't know what it is, and I can only speculate, and I'd rather not. But Rashford's significantly better than what he is playing right now. And I think Garnacho comes into the starting eleven. He was so positive, man, against Sheffield United. It made such a big difference. They didn't really know what to do with him. And Copenhagen, will they sit deep? It's probably quite likely. Will they sit on the counter? Probably quite likely. But if we've got Regulon down there on the left-hand side, going on the overlaps, will make a big, big difference. I'm telling you, Rashford's been missing that. But I would bring Garnacho on the left-hand side, and I would definitely, as long as he's fit anyway, Definitely start that man up front. It's a big game for Hoyland, man. His twin brothers, Emil and Oscar, both, of course, playing for Copenhagen at different levels. Emil, I believe, was it Emil? Can't remember which one. Uh, made his Champions League debut uh, in the game against Galatasaray, I think. Either one. Anyway, he's made his Champions League debut. I think it was the same weekend, that, uh, the same week, game week, that Hoyland scored against Bayern. So I think that was against Galatasaray. He could line up against one of his twin brothers. Well, not his twin brother. He's got twin brothers who are 18, could line up against one of them on Tuesday. It'll be a family affair. And look, uh, Eric Ten Hag's been speaking about it and said, look, it's going to be a special match for him. And I think he's just been positive in pretty much every game so far. We need to start getting the ball to Holland in better positions more regularly. Please, he will score. It's kind of painful now. But that would be my team. The changes there. I would keep Anthony on the right-hand side. You could potentially put Mount there. You could potentially put Garnacho there. I didn't really like Garnacho. Was it Rashford who went out to the right and then Garnacho was on the left against Sheffield United towards the end. You know what I think about Rashford on the right-hand side. Prediction-wise, 
Jeez, man. I just don't know what to predict with United anymore. I really don't. I've got it spot on with the Sheffield United prediction. I said that's kind of like a 2-1 win that I don't think United fans will enjoy, but it will be the result. Again, this is a game where the result is is the definitive... It's, it's, it, of course, in the football is a results-driven game. But this one in particular, because it's a must-win, we lost our first two. I'm going to go for a 3-1 United. One of those games where maybe like you're 2-1 and then the opposition's chasing and you can hit on the counter and you can end the game with like a goal in like the 85th minute. Imagine I get all that spot on. That'll be some Mystic Meg thing. I'm going to go for a 3-1 win. You might say that's overconfident. You can let me know what you think in the comments. But I would bring in Garnacho on the left-hand side. I would bring in Mount into the midfield and I'll make a couple of changes in defence. Lindelof going into cent left centre-back and Regulon coming in left-back if he is fit. And if he's not fit, then well, sod knows what our defence is going to be like. But you can let me know what you think in the comments below. As I said, drop a like on the video. I'll see you soon.